After the release of the last video, GOCM 2023, Six Year Investigation, our family went through a devastating tragic event. I stopped working on videos. After doing a lot of soul searching and reflecting on everything that has taken place over the past few years, my eyes were fully opened. The portal these spirits speak of is an open door into the dark side of the supernatural. What's beyond this door is extremely dark, dangerous, and deceiving. This evil entices the soul to come through the doorway of this portal. Many have crossed this doorway, not knowing what they crossed into. When your eyes are open to true knowledge of good and evil, you have a choice to make. After I realized what this portal is, revealed through supernatural events, I shut down all investigations. The knowledge obtained is so disturbing, I didn't want to talk about these events or make any more videos about these encounters. I turned away from evil and chose the good. My soul found peace. The dark supernatural events ended. The heaviness I felt from these encounters came to a stop. It was time to put all these events that took place over the past few years behind me and never look back. A few weeks went by, new supernatural events were unfolding. Biblical scriptures kept coming up in strange ways. I knew this couldn't be a coincidence. This was one of the scriptures that kept coming up. Ezekiel 3, 18-19 if I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, and you give him no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked from his wicked way, in order to save his life, that wicked person shall die from his iniquity, but his blood I will require at your hand. But if you warn the wicked, and he does not turn from his wickedness, or from his wicked way, he shall die for his iniquity. But you will have delivered your soul. The second scripture that kept coming up, Ephesians 5.11 and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. I wrestled with this over and over again in my mind. To expose this evil, I would have to go back to these encounters and talk about everything that has taken place. I found peace in my spirit. I didn't want to think about these events. These scriptures kept coming up. Now I'm feeling like I'm being haunted by scriptures from the Bible. I scrapped everything I was working on before I stopped the videos and started working on a series of videos. To fully understand what took place and how these events unfolded, I need to start where I left off, the spiritualist movement of Carmel. The investigation clips in this video took place before the tragic events unfolded that caused me to stop these investigations. This is part one of the series, The Village Triangle and the Supernatural. These are the warnings. Many residents have experienced paranormal events within the village of Carmel. For many years, people did not want to talk about these encounters. They didn't want to come across as being crazy. The more investigations conducted at the Lamb House, more people were coming forward, telling me about their experiences with events that could only be classified as hauntings. My first official paranormal investigation outside the Lamb House took place at this location, known as the Paul and Annie Haskell House, now home to the Carmel Historical Society. Some members of the Historical Society talked to me about what they experienced. They asked me to conduct an investigation to verify these encounters. What they were experiencing was verified. There is activity at the Paul Haskell House. This investigation showed me the Lamb House doesn't stand alone when it comes to paranormal encounters. Not long after the Paul Haskell House investigation, a resident told me about strange events taking place at this house. He lived next door to the Paul Haskell House. He asked me to conduct an investigation. We confirmed this house also has paranormal activity. More residents at different locations within the village of Carmel came forward, telling me about the hauntings they experienced. You can hear the walk. That's just like that. Like. That's true. just what it sounds like coming across there. I hear the footsteps up and down the stairs and out through here. Kevin and I had a rent here on 69. Well, we moved in there and my dad moved in with us and he didn't believe in ghosts. He became a believer. I mean, there was a lot of activity in the house. We heard a huge bang on that freaking door. That door is a huge that, that bang. That door is yeah. six inches thick. And I went to just go grab something off of that, and we were all like, "Okay, it's time to leave at this point." I was standing here, 
crashing out of customers. And out of nowhere, the bag fell and went right in the trash that was down below it at the time. So I was nowhere near the tobacco, and there's no way that that would have fallen on its own. Tap dancing up upstairs. At night. At night. And clear as day, I heard her heel, toe, heel, toe, walking across the... And when she floor. walks, you can feel this will shake. We also had a roommate. We would go away um, to build playgrounds. We'd go away on trips, and he would call us in the middle of the night. He said it felt like there was somebody in the house with him. He would hear noises in the attic. And you can hear footsteps. people footsteps up and down and right through here, and you walk out, there's nobody here. And it's just like this. Yeah, this, it's really no, loud. just like this. And there's that bag of tobacco right up there. Yeah, the red bag. And it went flying right off the shelf behind you. Right down in the trash. And there's no way to explain how that would fly off the shelf? No. Have you ever experienced anything like this outside of the village of Carmel? Um, no. <laughs> so you would say this place, the village of Carmel is definitely on it? Absolutely. Yeah, that's no joke. The encounters within the village of Carmel are one and the same. Something took place that caused this to happen. What would cause a community haunting? This, this is the most haunted town I've ever seen in my life. Parents got involved with spiritualism in hopes to contact their children. I've got freaking chills all over me. Uh, I live right across the street, Howard Haskell House. You remember Mark? Touch it again. How many doorways are open? by doing such rituals to contact the dead. Two people died in that room right there. Are you in here? Something here in Carmel that drew these people to this area to practice spiritualism. You're trying to get these people's attention? Did you hear that child's voice? Who's here? There was something going on here that people knew about that had to do with a doorway open into the spirit realms. Whoa! Can you tell me what your name is, please? Why did all these people, these spiritualists, flock to this area? What brought them here? Absolutely no doubt, this village triangle is a portal. So can you say that the village of Carmel is extremely haunted? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. This, this is the most haunted town I've ever seen in my life. From the late 1800s into the mid-1900s, this house was known as the Croxford House. Lois Croxford, also known as Lois Lamb Croxford, sister to Edmund Lamb, sister-in-law to Hattie, resided in this house. In the 1900s, this house was also a boarding house. To this day, different residents live within the building. The house has been divided into apartments. A resident of Carmel, Bobby, asked me to come and check out the paranormal activity going on within his apartment. 
He said living in this apartment, the activity has become unbearable. He recently moved into this apartment from another location that he had activity in as well. The other location is also located within the village of Carmel. That's freaky up there. That's freaky up there? That is freaky up there. I don't go up there. I don't use the bedrooms for nothing. But when you walk in, you feel it. Each room has a different feel. Lois, are you here by chance? Who stays in this house? My name is Cat. What's your name? What's your name? Voice. Hello? Is Lois Lamb here? Did anything you want to tell me? Anything you'd like to talk about? Why do you stay at this house? What was that? Why do you stay at this house? What was that? What was what that voice? What the fuck was that? Hello? When I heard this voice, I instantly looked over at Bobby. I thought he turned on his TV, but he didn't have any remote in his hand, only his cell phone. The voice came from his TV while it was set on screensaver. It's not uncommon to hear voices coming from electronic devices. Countless times while watching TV in my bedroom, I would hear a voice coming from the TV. The voice didn't go with the show I was watching. I have shown this in older videos. Here is another example. I kept hearing voices coming from the TV. The voices did not come from the gentleman talking. They had the Roman theater, but it wouldn't house that many, and the Jews wouldn't be at the Roman theater. In fact, their religion would prohibit them from partaking in these Roman events that were pagan events. So their religion would prohibit them from partaking. Their religion would prohibit them from partaking. What 
this female said at Bobby's is consistent with other voices captured during many investigations. Why do you stay at this house? The subject of children are brought up. This was the first time Bobby experienced a loud voice coming from any electronic device. Sometimes the voices are so loud, this is very startling. And you sit there in shock, wondering if you heard what you thought you heard. What the fuck? That just freaked me the fuck out. Hello? What the? I've never had that happen. I wonder if it's because I'm asking questions. We both feel a cold temperature drop as if cold air swirled around us. We can feel the goosebumps suddenly coming up throughout our bodies. As we're talking about this incident, two different female voices are captured. Come here. Come here. Switch your mad doors. Oh, of course they be. All right, I'll leave you alone. Whoa, whoa, I've got freaking chills all over me. What the? Seriously, did you feel that? No, I am I'm goosebumps. What? What? You got him all over you too. Oh, I felt him feeling it again. Dude. I felt him feeling it again. I felt him. I felt him. I felt him. It's 80 degrees in here, and I'm not. I mean, they're all over me. The chill. Did you feel that? You're going to the. You're going to the basement. Come on. It's 80 degrees in here. 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 All right, here we go. This. It's like a chamber of secrets. Chamber of secrets. Wow. It has, it has a to be strange is, smell. I know, it. and it's this is how they kept it way back then. And you can feel it. It just gets heavy. The further you go in, the further it gets, the more heavy it gets. Hello? Oh, uh, we got something. Ken. What's beeping? Are you down here? This has never gone off. This has never gone off. Let me see the numbers on there. That's never ever gone off. A3? A3, what the f***? That should automatically reset. It won't reset. What the fuck? You did something. What did you do? That's never, ever, ever gone this off. This has before. never gone off. Over the years, I have seen electronic equipment react in strange ways that is not normal at active locations within the village of Carmel. This generally happens when you acknowledge spirits within the location. I don't know anything about this electronic device, but Bobby is puzzled by the device going off. And it's calling a fault. Delay. Delay seven. Here we go. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna ask questions. What the f Hello? Who's in this house with us? Original shutters from the 1800s. And the original chimney sweep. Everything. This is all the original stuff from the house. Yeah, and I have old pictures of this. I notice Bobby is looking pale, and he sounds like he's short of breath. It was after we entered this basement he was having a physical effect. 
He did say when he enters the basement he gets a heavy feeling, and the heavier the feeling gets when he gets further into the basement. Bobby's going to make some statements, and I'm concerned about his well-being. My heart's going 100. Yeah, there's just some weird stuff that that boy still upstairs. I got. That I can't wait to hear that. So this was another. Was this another fireplace? This was. Just... This was a secondary fireplace. This is one they added on, and it used to. It used to go right up, but this used to just be the heat down here. Let me turn my camera light on. Yeah, this, this used is... to be just. It was like a vault that, that just heated down here. It's really old. Are you here? Would you like to talk? Wait, stay right here. I'm going to go this way. Do you know who that is standing there? Hey, it's Bobby. Remember we talked? Remember we talked? Oh, my ears are just pounding. Kent, my ears are pounding. Really? Like, like, just boom, boom, boom. Like, like, just boom, boom, boom. Just better shut the lights out. <laughs> It feels like feel like something's going wham 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 against my head. Well, I feel a lot of pressure in my ears, like that's, that's like I'm going up a mountain and my ears are plugging up. And look, this is reset. It's all it's all. Look. This has never ever failed, and that was failed when we came down here. Hmm. Were you playing with this device? an old saw. Oh, I need some beans. Oh, here and here. Definitely an old, old, old house. I feel like I'm smothered. Can't breathe. I feel like I can't breathe. Anything you want to tell us before we leave this basement? When they first installed the the, the boiler here, because it used to be a boiler situation, mm -hmm. um, the heater. The boiler situation. Situation. And it blew up on him, and that's what all these parts and pieces are, and and it blew up on him, and he died right here. Really? And this is the new one that they just put in a few years ago. How long ago did he die here? Oh, this was. 20 years ago, 30 years ago, so wow. it was a long time, because it was before this, it was one of the old boilers, boiler yeah. systems, and this, this was, yeah. well, that was the original tank, that's, that was the original tank, that's the first tank that they came in with. I know the history of this one, and the one I lived in down there, yeah. and it's just, that's, that's, Whoa. Whoa, whoa. I just heard that. It's just... Two people died in that room right there. They died of elderly... They, they died old of old age. Mm -hmm. But one of them was like... She was she. She outlived her husband, and she she died in there by herself, and they didn't find her for like a week. Really. And this was back when the dirt, the, the road was still dirt. Still dirt. You can feel it. Whoa. Female voice. Can you say that again, please? Yeah. 
Disembodied voice of a male. something off of that and we were all like okay it's time to leave at this point and then I went to the bathroom another time after we were done fighting and I, was, I needed a break so I went to the bathroom and clear as day I heard her heel toe heel toe are you in here what's your name Are you here? Heard a disembodied voice. Are you here? This is his wife. Georgia. Yeah. This is their family plot. There was a little baby right here. And this is a little baby. They died in childbirth. This is my peace. This is where I go to just be happy. This is my peace. This is where I go to just be happy. This is where I go to. This is her baby. Because they just put baby. These people are just so. She was only 15 years old when she died. Lucinda, she was like this. She was what? No Roy. No Roy. No Roy. No Roy. No Roy. She was banging everything in town, and she was Ezra's wife, but she was like banging everybody, and you know, like, she, she had fun.
I live right across the street, Howard Haskell House. I'm going to turn the ghost box on, okay? I know you guys know how to use that. They always ask about Kent. We have a lot of different spirits that come through. A lot of them we do not know who they are. Some of them we do. A lot of Edwards, Edmonds. Some of them are different voices, but males. Who else is in this house? But a lot of females and children. Hello? So you hear a lot of noises up in this room. Yeah. Are you trying to get Kevin's attention? Are you trying to talk with Kevin? Now's the time. Do stuff that can hear you. front of you. Yeah. You following Kevin? Okay, it's trying to interact with this K2 meter now too. There it goes. We couldn't hear what you said at first because we weren't expecting it, but now can you talk with us?
Are you following me? Help? Can you say that again, please? Alright, I know I heard help. No doubt about that. Did this used to be your home back in the day? Did you just say something? Tell me what your name is, please. Come to say hi. Whoa. Wow. Are you right? Did you guys hear that? I heard yeah. that loud and clear. Hello? After 3 a.m., all hell is breaking loose. Those devices are still going off in there. Does this have anything to do with the hour, 3 a.m.? Did you hear that child's voice? It's great setup. Do you open and close doors in here trying to get these people's attention?
you located at in this house? Are you here? Are you here? Community-wide encounters with spirits. I don't believe spirit encounters such as this can occur unless something was done to cause this to happen. The answers are found in Carmel's historical past, the spiritualist movement that came to Carmel. Spiritualism developed and reached its peak growth in membership from the 1840s to the 1920s. By 1897, spiritualism was said to have more than 8 million followers in the United States and Europe. It's likely the spiritualist movement started growing in Carmel by the 1840s. Eventually, a spiritualist camp was opened just outside the village of Carmel off Highway 2. There were a lot of spiritualists in Carmel when this camp opened. We don't know how many Carmel residents were involved with the spiritualist movement, but it's likely the movement drew in a lot of outsiders who moved to the Carmel area to practice spiritualism. In 1876, Daniel Bushwell Jr. held a spiritualist gathering in a tent on land in Etna. The land was purchased by 1880. Camp Etna was established. Eventually, the spiritualist camp in Carmel shut down. Carmel residents attended events at Camp Etna. Based on Camp Etna's records in the early 1900s, Carmel residents were officers on the board. During the summer season, spiritualists stayed at boarding houses that were available within the village of Carmel. Such places as St. Almo, also known as Maggie's Tea House, the Elms, and the Croxford House. One of Carmel's well-known residents were also members of the spiritualist movement, Paul and Annie Haskell. From the Paul Haskell House, home to the Carmel Historical Society, the Haskells also owned a cottage at Camp Etna. Carmel Village residents were a close-knitted community. Most of the men were Freemasons. The women, members of the Order of the Eastern Star. Hattie Lamb was a member of the Order of the Eastern Star. Those within the village of Carmel attended the Congressional Church within the village. An older Carmel resident, Doug Small, he's a fifth-generation Carmel resident, had some interesting information about the spiritualists in Carmel. In the early to mid-1900s, it wasn't uncommon Carmel residents within the village of Carmel practiced spiritualism, and a lot of the residents in those days were spiritualists. If he's correct, it's only logical to assume the Howard Haskell family were also spiritualists. If the Croxford house was used to board spiritualists, we can only assume the Croxford were also spiritualists. Now I raised a question, were Edmund and Hattie also spiritualists? Based on Camp Etna's records, we do know the Carmel band Edmund Lamb belonged to performed at events at Camp Etna. The house Edmund and Hattie owned and lived in on Hampton Road between 1900 and 1920 was next door to the Elms, a boarding house that housed spiritualists during the summer season. 
Willis Hughes buys the house from the lands. Hughes was an active spiritualist and director at Camp Etna. What were the spiritualist movement's beliefs? As defined by the spiritualist movement, spiritualists believed in the possibility of communicating with the spirits of dead people, who they regard as discarnated humans. They believed that spirit mediums are gifted to carry on such communications, but that anyone may become a medium through study and practice. Based on this activity within the village of Carmel, I have no doubt many spiritualists, mediums, did perform the necessary rituals to communicate with the dead at all these locations within the village. Doorways were opened into the realms of the dead. If there was a community involved with spiritualism, this would explain all the hauntings described by many residents to this day, not just in the village of Carmel, but at other locations in Carmel as well. Throughout the years conducting these investigations, the village of Carmel is the most active location in Carmel. Imagine hundreds of mediums gathering within a community that extended from the village of Carmel into Camp Etna, conducting rituals, opening doorways to the realm of the dead, communicating with spirits. But then we must ask questions. Are mediums real? Can mediums open a doorway into realms of the dead to communicate? All of the residents within the village of Carmel who experienced encounters, including myself, can verify these doors are open between our realm and the realm of the dead. The encounters we have experienced verifies this, and over the years, I've documented these encounters to show others what we experience. The next question, are these encounters actually encounters with spirits of the dead, or are these encounters with demonic entities? This is by far one of the most debatable topics within the paranormal and religious communities. I have read many comments, received messages from viewers who say, these are all demons. The dead cannot communicate with the living, and the dead cannot come back to haunt the living. I have read many online discussions about this topic from biblical scholars who stand firm all spirit encounters are either with God, his angels, or with demons. The dead cannot come back. They know nothing. Some scholars believe the dead are asleep. They have no consciousness until the day of resurrection. In order to answer these questions, since these statements are based on biblical scriptures, We'll need to go to the scriptures to find answers. If you don't believe in the Bible, that's fine, but you might want to listen to this. These are the main two scriptures used by scholars to show the spirit of the dead cannot communicate with the living. Consciousness ends at the moment of death. Death is a state of sleep or soul sleeping. Ecclesiastes 9.5 says, For the living know that they will die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Verse 6. Their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. This was written by King Solomon. When reading the whole chapter combined, Solomon was talking about how life is vanity. We all live life under the sun, knowing our time on this earth will come to an end. We all die. When he says the dead know not anything, neither have any more reward, once a person dies, everything they were under the sun on earth has come to an end. Eventually, as generations pass on, those who died will be forgotten. Job chapter 7, 9 through 10. As the cloud is consumed and vanishes away, so he that goes down to the grave shall come up no more. He shall return no more to his house, Neither shall his place know him any more. Both Solomon and Job are speaking about life on this earth while in the flesh. Our flesh is like a cloud consumed and vanishes away. Our time on this earth will end. Once we are dead from this life, there is no coming back. Your house is no longer your place of home. And the place you called home, that place will know you no more. Eventually, as time moves forward, you will be forgotten on this earth. Life on this earth is for the realm of the living. We all know this will come to an end. As generations move on, we are forgotten. As Solomon stated, all is vanity under the sun. When we depart from this life, 
Our spirit moves on to the realm of the dead. Can a spiritualist or medium actually communicate with the dead? Well, let's take a look at the scriptures. As recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 28, what people call the Witch of Endor. Pay close attention to what is written in this passage of scriptures. This too has been debated by scholars. The prophet Samuel has died. This was during the reign of King Saul. God rejected Saul as king due to his disobedience. The Philistines gathered to do battle with Israel. When Saul saw the host of the Philistines, he was afraid and his heart greatly trembled. When Saul inquired of the Lord, basically wanting to know what to do with the situation, the Lord would not answer him. In short, Saul got in contact with a medium to contact the prophet Samuel for instructions about the Philistines. In chapter 28, then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up? Saul tells her, Bring up Samuel. The medium brings up Samuel. In verse 15, And Samuel said to Saul, Why have you disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed, for the Philistines make war against me, and God has departed from me, and does not answer me no more, neither by prophet nor by dreams. Therefore I have called you, that you may make known to me what I shall do. Then said Samuel, Wherefore then do you ask me, seeing the Lord has departed from you, and has become your enemy? Some Bible scholars say this was not the spirit of Samuel, this was a demon posing as Samuel. However, in verse 15, as it is written, And Samuel said to Saul, verse 16, as it is written, Then said Samuel, Two times it is written in the passage of scriptures this was Samuel speaking to Saul. Nowhere is it written this was a demon speaking to Saul. If this was a demon speaking to Saul, this would have been written clarifying this was a demon, not Samuel. Many passages in the scriptures refer to mediums, spiritists, communicating with the dead. However, practicing the arts of communicating with the dead is extremely dangerous and is forbidden by God in the scriptures. This alone tells us mediums contacting the dead do exist. Attempting to receive knowledge and enlightenment from the dead, other than through the Spirit of God, not only disrupts the dead, once the Spirit of the dead are brought up and that doorway is open, the results are devastating to both the living and the dead. Based on these encounters within the village of Carmel and the large number of mediums performing seances at different locations within the village, we can testify what was done in the past still has a devastating effect on the living to this day. To many, these encounters can be frightening. The most devastating effects with these encounters are the psychological effects. You experience a number of mixed emotions that come over you. Feelings you can't explain. When we moved in there, um, I was having a lot of uh, night terrors, and my dad moved in with us. He said he would get angry during the day um, for no reason at all. He ended up getting extremely sick, and um, that was just, that was strange. Sorrow, anger, fear, unexplained anxiety, feelings of impending doom. When encountering multiple spirits, these encounters turn into oppression and then depression. You feel drained. You feel trapped. I started out innocently investigating this activity. In my eyes, this was the most amazing supernatural events I've ever witnessed. All of my doubts about the existence of the afterlife vanished. Truly, there is much, much more going on than what we could ever imagine. What I didn't understand at the time, by communicating with the dead, I crossed a threshold of an already open door into the realm of the dead. I justified my actions by thinking, I didn't bring these spirits up from the realm of the dead. Someone else did this. In my mind, I wasn't doing anything wrong. But the more I talked with these spirits, the stronger the activity became. The stronger the activity became, the more I was amazed by these encounters. The more I was amazed by these encounters, the further I crossed the threshold of that door into the realm of the dead. This became a vicious circle that took me into a reality that wasn't my own. Within Carmel and Etna, the spiritualist movement grew into hundreds. People from all over the New England area came to this area to practice the arts of spiritualism. People came in hope mediums will contact their dead loved ones. I believe many parents who lost their children from disease outbreaks sought the services of mediums to contact their children. People were so grief-stricken losing a loved one. They came here to talk with them through mediums. 
with multiple spiritualists doing rituals, contacting the dead, the doorway into the realm of the dead enlarged. With each seance at different locations, that doorway grew larger, opened wider, but obviously it was never closed. For many decades, residents have experienced unexplained phenomena. Documented testimony goes all the way back to the hitching post. As stated in this written document, this took place from around the early to mid-1900s, titled, Was Ghost to Blame for Burning Carmel House? The visitors, it was reported, as well as others, and the residents stated, they have witnessed strange phenomena. And he was in the shower. In the shower. I was at the sink. What were just talking about? And I could have sworn I saw a gray cat, or the back of a cat or dog, run right by. When Kevin lived in the lamb house, um, he said that the cupboard doors would open and shut. They would slam. And I saw it right, right there. And, and like, gray. it hooked that way. Same you idea. saw it. Same idea, Greg. Both of us saw it. And the cat, I don't know, even know what it was. It was like a big gray mess. He was pinned to his bed. He couldn't get up. His brother didn't believe in, in uh, the paranormal activity, so he came to the lamb house to spend the night, and um, he ran out of the house in the middle of the night. He went home because something happened to him. It, they don't, like, pull the covers, like, off me, but I can just feel... Something tugging? Yeah, yeah, it's, it, it's hard to describe. Music coming from out of nowhere. Footsteps heard upstairs. That's just, just like what that. it sounds like. That's it's just what it sounds like coming across here. You know, it's mostly like a person running, literally running the whole length back and forth. I hear the footsteps up and down the stairs. And it's clear as day, I heard her heel, toe, heel, toe, walking across the And platform. when she walks, you can feel this will shape. Tap dancing up, upstairs. At night. At Originally started in Carmel, what brought so many spiritualists to this area? Why in such a small town? The spiritualist movement grew in number so large, the gatherings were moved to the land in Etna to accommodate the amount of people who came. Outside of New York, the spiritualist movement in this area grew into one of the largest spiritualist gatherings in the United States. I believe something to do with the supernatural drew them to this area but I couldn't explain what it was. For the longest time during these investigations, the answers were in plain sight, but could only be understood through supernatural events unfolding right before our eyes. The answers are found in the village triangle. A few years ago, I concluded this triangle was designed by the Freemasons based on Egyptian mythology, and the numbers 3, 6, and 9 were the number codes that open a gateway in the spirit realms. This is much more than a portal in the spirit realms. This is much more than a doorway going into the realm of the dead. After conducting the investigations into this triangle, shown in Revelations by Ghost, Spirits wanted me to look at this village triangle. They revealed this triangle as a portal. After this investigation, these encounters changed. Supernatural events started unfolding, strange symbols appearing more often. The encounters turned dark and extremely negative. Every time I worked on a specific topic for a video, the topic I was working on would show up in supernatural ways, giving confirmation to the subject in the video. While doing research to explain what this village triangle is, the Egyptian pyramids, the numbers 3, 6, and 9, Nikola Tesla, and the Freemasons would always lead me back to this triangle. While doing research into these topics, we returned to the Southwest Harbor House for a third investigation. Tara had a new room boarder staying in the house. What boggled my mind, everything I saw at the Southwest Harbor House on that third investigation confirmed what I was looking into about the village triangle. The man talked with me about the Egyptian pyramids, Nikola Tesla, 369, the Freemasons. I knew then what he said and the things I saw during that investigation. None of this is a coincidence. Supernatural forces are involved with the village triangle, but I still didn't understand exactly what this is. I knew this portal is something much bigger and is tied into ancient beliefs, Egyptian mythology and the numbers 3, 6, and 9. Another strange supernatural event takes place. Walking through the dining room in the house, sitting on the table is a book someone dropped off for my grandson. Instantly, the hand with the number three on the palm got my attention. The hand had six fingers. The number three, six fingers, three plus six equals nine, three, six, nine. When I opened the book looking through the pages, 
What I saw sent shockwaves throughout my body. This book sitting in this house at this moment is no coincidence. After this book came into the house, more supernatural events started unfolding involving the numbers 3, 6, and 9. While these events were unfolding, I was doing more research into Nikola Tesla in hopes to understand what these numbers mean and why supernatural events are unfolding. Nikola Tesla was known for his fascination with the numbers 369 and believed that it held a key to unlocking the secrets of the universe. In March 2023, Tara from the Southwest Harbor House wanted us to come back for another investigation. She too said the activity has changed. Chris with Realm Explorer went with me. After this investigation, everything takes a turn. The floodgates of supernatural events started unfolding involving the numbers 369. And now more numbers are repeatedly coming up, 3 and 33. During an investigation in the garage, once again, the numbers are brought up. After this investigation, I go back to the garage to do another investigation. Something is said during this investigation that sends me on an unexpected direction looking into the numbers 3, 6, and 9. <laughs> I can say with much certainty, not all of these encounters are with spirits of the dead. For this reason, performing rituals opening doors into realms we don't fully understand is extremely dangerous. How can you distinguish between spirits? Evil is a mirror image of all things that are good. In July of 2023, more supernatural events were unfolding more than I've ever seen before. Over and over again, the numbers 369, 3 and 33 were coming up daily. In part 2 of this series, we will show everything that took place, what happened, and how these supernatural events unfolded right before our eyes. Three hours after doing this investigation with Bobby on August 1st, Bobby went into cardiac arrest. CPR was performed, but his heart kept stopping. He was in the ICU for many days. He survived this ordeal. On August 3rd, I received the most devastating news any parent could ever hear. One of my sons was found dead. On September 10th, Tara from the Southwest Harbor House passes away. Now I know exactly what this portal is.